Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session on optimizing file storage costs with Amazon EFS Intelligent Turing. My name is Priya Chakravarti, and I'm a PM in the EFS team. I'm very excited to talk to you today about cost optimization and how to drive cost efficiencies with Amazon EFS. I'd like to begin by giving you a quick overview of Amazon EFS. We will talk about the existing options or pillars of cost optimization in EFS. We will discuss when and how to optimize costs in EFS. Then we'll talk about a brand new option available to you to optimize costs called EFS Intelligent Turing. We will then see how this can be applied to real customer applications. We will be talking today about a customer who has a special relationship with the EFS team, how they partner with us to build features, how they think about cost optimization in EFS. Finally, I'd like to summarize with information about how to get started with this brand new feature. So what is Amazon EFS? We launched EFS back in 2016 to give customers a super simple, set and forget, fully managed cloud native file system. You can get up and running in just seconds in as little as two clicks and have petabyte scale elastic storage that's trivially easy to use. EFS provides the capabilities and integrations you need to confidently run business critical applications that need shared file storage in the cloud. EFS is elastic, automatically scaling up and down as you add or remove files, and you pay only for what you use. Your performance automatically scales with your capacity, which, by the way, EFS file systems can scale up to petabytes in size. EFS is also highly available and designed to be highly durable. We offer a 49's availability SLA and we designed for 11 nines of data durability. To achieve these levels of availability and durability, all files and directories are redundantly stored within and across multiple availability zones or AZs as we call it. EFS file systems can withstand the full loss of a single availability zone while still providing the same quality of service from the other AZs. EFS is serverless. You don't need to provision or manage any infrastructure or capacity for your modern applications. And as your workload scales up, so does your file system automatically accommodating any additional storage or connection capacity that you need. Speaking of connections, EFS file systems supports up to tens of thousands of concurrent clients, no matter the type. There could be, these could be traditional EC2 instances, containers running in one of your self-managed clusters or in one of AWS container services such as ECS, EKS, and Fargate, or in serverless functions running in AWS Lambda. You can also access your file systems from on-prem via AWS Direct Connect and AWS VPN. In terms of performance, EFS file systems provide consistent latencies in a single digit millisecond range for active file system workloads and can scale up to tens of gigabytes of throughput and support over 500,000 IOPS. And finally, EFS storage classes provide you with automatic cost optimization and helps you achieve an optimal price performance blend for your workload. With a native lifecycle management cap capability, Files that you aren't frequently accessing will be automatically moved from the standard storage class to the lower cost EFS and frequent access storage class, completely transparent to users and application. IA costs just two and a half cents, 92% less than standard. And with this built-in capabilities, what we see is that roughly 80% of data isn't accessed frequently you can achieve an effective storage price of just eight cents a gigabyte month. EFS One Zone adds additional, two additional single zone storage classes starting at 16 cents a gigabyte month 
and an effective storage price of just four cents a gigabyte month. So how are customers using EFS today? We interviewed customers and surveyed thousands of field members to arrive at the top use cases for EFS. These range from video hosting or image processing applications using EFS to store files during the editing process, web serving or CMS application using EFS to store web content, backup storage for databases and commercial applications, a persistent store for modern applications like containers and Lambda, and a place to store the output of ML training sets and data analytics. There are five main reasons why we see customers continue to move to the cloud, and they are agility, cost savings, elasticity, the ability to innovate faster, and the ability to deploy globally. As our customers move to the AWS cloud, we see three major trends when it comes to what customers are doing. They are migrating their applications and storage to AWS by lifting and shifting business critical applications or by migrating data. Two, they are modernizing their applications to run on containers and serverless. And finally, ISVs and MSPs are transforming their business delivery model to SaaS and lowering the total cost of ownership. How does EFS support this cost optimization for our customers and partners? When we speak to customers, the most frequent feedback about EFS is that EFS is that customers want us to optimize for performance and they want us to optimize for cost. This session is about how we're moving the goalposts for one of those levers, that is cost optimization. In 2019, we, lost, we, we, we launched EFS in frequent access that allows customers to leverage a lower cost storage for infrequently accessed files and save up to 92% on storage compared to the performance optimized storage class. We use lifecycle management and allow customers to select between six policies to move these files. Earlier this year, we launched EFS One Zone, a new storage class for workloads such as test dev and backup storage that does not need the resiliency of our regional services. EFS One Zone allowed customers to save 47% of their storage costs compared to EFS standard. Finally, there is AWS budgets that allows customers to track and set limits on their usage and, gets, and get notified if it is exceeded. Before we jump into this feature, Let's discuss EFS storage classes and how they relate to the concept of frequent and infrequent access. Amazon Elastic File System offers four storage classes, two standard storage classes, Amazon EFS Standard and Amazon EFS Infrequent Access, and two one-zone storage classes, Amazon EFS One Zone and Amazon EFS One Zone Infrequent Access. The EFS standard and EFS one zone storage classes are performance optimized to deliver lower latencies for frequently accessed files. The infrequent access storage classes are cost optimized for files that are not accessed every day. EFS storage classes are classified by multi-AZ and single-AZ resiliency, and you can only transition between storage classes in the same durability model. The term frequent and infrequent access refers to access patterns. When we look across all the applications running on Amazon EFS, we find that workloads span four different access patterns. Some applications access 100% of their storage over a short period of time. These tend to be dynamic applications like financial simulations and are better served by the standard storage class. When applications generate content that tend to age over time, and customers are certain about this fact, we recommend setting lifecycle management to transition these files to the infrequent access storage class. Backup data is an example of such an application. Sometimes we see workloads where data is accessed frequently, then not at all for a period of time, and then suddenly it becomes active again. Blogs, 
machine learning training sets, container and lambda workloads. These are examples of workloads where sudden access can generate a lot of changes. Finally, there are workloads where we don't know anything about how they are accessed or their use cases. These are unknown workloads which can also benefit from the new feature that we are launching today. Why are we here today? We are here today because customers gave us the feedback about the one-way nature of EFS infrequent access storage classes. Customers loved that they could save up to 92% of their storage storage costs using EFS infrequent access, but they were worried about using IA for workloads where they did not understand their workload access patterns or how it changes with time. Today, to address this feedback from customers, we're launching EFS Intelligent Turing to optimize storage costs for workloads with unknown or changing access patterns. EFS Intelligent Turing is a feature of lifecycle management and uses lifecycle management to move files to the right storage class at the right time. When you use EFS Intelligent Turing to move files between the frequent and infrequent access storage classes, you provided a cost guardrail from runaway access charges. EFS Intelligent Turing is a set of two lifecycle policies, one to move files to the infrequent access storage class and another to move files to the performance optimized frequent access storage class. With EFS Intelligent Turing, not only does lifecycle management move infrequently accessed data to the IA storage classes, but also, if access patterns change and that data is accessed again, EFS lifecycle management automatically moves the files back to EFS standard or EFS one zone, eliminating the risk of unbounded access charges while providing the best performance for these files. If the files becomes frequently accessed again, EFS intelligent Turing will transition the files back to IA based on your lifecycle policy. What are the use cases for EFS Intelligent Turing? Any workload will benefit from EFS Intelligent Turing, but particularly workloads where data access patterns are unpredictable. These span data science workloads, modern applications like containers and Lambda where concurrent access to a set of files is common, user-generated content that get, tend to get popular with, or unpopular as time goes by, and financial simulations. How to get started with EFS Intelligent Turing? Getting started with EFS Intelligent Turing is as easy as setting two lifecycle policies from the CLI, API, or AWS Management Console. These two lifecycle policies are set by default in the console for new file systems. You can click Edit on existing file systems and set these two policies. For an existing file system, you can use put lifecycle configuration API action or put lifecycle configuration command specifying the file system ID of the file system for which you are enabling lifecycle management and EFS intelligent Turing. To disable EFS intelligent Turing, set both the lifecycle policies to transition to and from IA as empty. This will disable lifecycle management and your files will remain on the storage class they're on. Any files that have begun moving when you disabled EFS Intelligent Turing will complete their movement to the new storage class. With the introduction of the new lifecycle policy, there are four combination of lifecycle policies supported. Classic lifecycle management policies where you access your file system as a hybrid file system is still supported. EFS Intelligent Turing is the combination of both a policy to move files. It's, it's a combination of policies to move files back and forth between the performance optimized and cost optimized storage classes. You can also choose to keep your files entirely in standard. And lastly, 
you can move files back to standard from infrequent access without a corresponding age of policy. You do this if you wanted to force promote files to standard. Now let's take a minute to discuss how a customer, Capital One, thinks about cost optimization and how they use EFS. This is a quote from a senior distinguished engineer of Capital One on EFS and the feature that we're launching today. EFS Intelligent Turing is helping them to further cost optimize their file-based workloads. Capital One is already all in on the AWS cloud with the majority of their workloads running on AWS. Capital One store hun stores hundreds of terabytes of storage on EFS file systems spanning a gamut of applications like analytics, backup, machine learning, etc. So that cap so that Capital One provides so much so that Capital One provides frequent feedback to us to our team on feature requirements and collaborates with us on the user experience. Capital One has one of their largest analytics workload on AWS running on EFS. Data analysts do ad hoc analysis for customers and store their outputs on EFS. Not every yield generated for customers is profitable and a lot of files are stored for posterity or compliance purposes. Capital One told us that they wanted to optimize their storage costs for such workloads where access patterns are unpredictable and, or changes over time. EFS Intelligent Turing allows Capital One to have the best of both worlds, transitioning hot data to standard, keeping cold data and infrequent access, and only paying access charges for transitions. There are no monitoring charges when you use EFS Intelligent Turing. To get started with optimizing costs on EFS, you should begin with understanding your application requirements and choosing the right storage class based on that. Then use lifecycle management to set the appropriate policy to enforce this choice. EFS Intelligent Turing is the right choice for most of your applications running on EFS, unless you're very sure about your access pattern. Finally, use AWS budgets to monitor your costs and set alerts based on usage. Thanks for listening to this talk. I hope you took away some useful information about how to optimize your storage costs using the option available, options available in EFS today including the new feature that we are launching today called EFS Intelligent Turing.